Jeez, I have to uh, get out of entertainment lawyer mode and get into right. Goonie mode. I'm right. trying to, how the hell did I get it? Was yeah. it something like an audition and I got it or something? Well, I was a kid actor and I started when I was about seven, I suppose. And, um, you know, basically I did, you know, commercials and cartoon voiceovers and all the 80s sitcoms. Um, and I got an audition, uh, my agent got me an audition for Goonies. And I actually first auditioned for the role of Mouth, because I would do um, I would do uh, impersonations. That was part of my shtick. I was a little fat kid and I was a little clown. So I tried out for Mouth, and they said that you sound like a mouth, but you look like a chunk. So I went back a second time, and I learned uh, new lines, chunks, chunks part. And then I uh, eventually went to Amblin and uh, interviewed for uh, Spielberg and Donner. The you know what's funny? Dream. If you watch Goonies. I think, I, this could be wrong, because it was a long time ago. Um, but I think if you watch Goonies from the beginning to the end, like from the, where they shot the early scenes, which would be Astoria, I guess the beginning Astoria stuff, till the very end, which is probably Bodega Bay, you know, with the ship going out, I think I lost weight, because I was like starting to get, not into puberty, but towards the march towards uh, puberty. And, uh, and I was losing weight, and I because <laughs> I wasn't that fat. Like I was looking bad at it, I wasn't that fat. As a kid, I always thought I was enormous, but I was like, yeah, I'm not that fat. Like, if you look at the Little Rascals, like, that kid, um, Spanky wasn't that fat either. I love Spanky. Greatest childhood actor of all time is, uh, is Spanky McFarlane, my, and for my money. Um, but uh, it's like, there's one kid, Porky or something like that, who was, like, enormous. He was literally, like, 500 pounds, you know what I mean? But I remember, I remember, um, like, I think I was kind of thinning out a little bit or looking a little bit different, and they needed it to match. It was five months. Yeah, it was five months. It was a long time, and a kid can grow a lot in five months. Um, and I, I, I could be imagining this, uh, but I remember, like, in my hotel room in Bodega Bay, like, I came back one day, and there was two things, like, this big, you know, like the, per like the pink, um, you know, bakery sheets of muffins. I really like muffins. We're not talking like little muffins, like a good 600 calorie muffin. We're talking like a 2,000 calorie, like, you know, like a chocolate, it was like chocolate muffins was one and like, like banana nut. Something that a fat kid could never resist. You know what I mean? Some awful, I mean, and I remember, <laughs> and I, it wasn't until years later, I think at the time I didn't even question it. You know what I mean? Cause I was just a fat kid and I was like, hey, two huge things of muffins. This is great. But then I was like, you know what? Somebody must have planted the muffins in my thing so I would stay fat for the rest of the, of the show. And uh, Dick Donner, I blame him for that. First, Davi should be strung up for pulling my hair and lying about it. It's not the act, it's the cover-up. I mean, that's what Nixon said, and I think it's true in this matter as well. It wasn't Joey Pants, with Robert Davi. And I think Dick Donner has to take some responsibility for giving me diabetes with, that, uh, with those muffins. Two words for you, gorilla scene. What do you remember from that? <laughs> okay, here's my gorilla scene. Again, there's no CGI. If you thought holding the doubloon in front of those three kids was bad, picture that with gorillas. There's no doubloon that could save us from that mess. Um, here's what I'm thinking about. Goonies was 85. When did Congo come out? <laughs> the movie Congo, 94? So, so artificial gorilla technology was literally nine years advanced than we had it in Goonies. Look at Congo and try roll back the clock nine years of worse gorilla technology. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Perfect. Dark stuff. That's great. What about the octopus? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I was going to Octopus down. technology. Yeah. <laughs> octopus, octopus technology. Octopus technology. <laughs> <laughs> Octopus technology still sucks. Because octopus is cool in concept, but smushy. You can't have a smushy, smushy villain. And there's a beak. That's there's a about. beak. You know what? There's a beak. Doesn't work. If they did Jaws, but they called it Beak, and it was just about like an octopus, even in Spielberg's capable hands, the movie would have tanked. Would have sucked. And apparently they're susceptible to, to music. Yeah. They love to dance. Music. They love to dance. The octopi. And uh, again, octopus technology, again, it's not, it hasn't even come forward. 
There's just not enough interest in the market <laughs> of octopus technology. You could still buy that octopus. They're still trying to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants it. You don't need that. Nobody wants it. No, Nobody yeah. wants a live one, a stuffed one. You could pull the kraken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kraken. Wait, in what? Where they get the kraken in? In uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Last one. Oh, that's right. Oh, hell, well, that goes that monologue. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't think, uh, I think, you know, it's weird. It's, it's a, I mean, I acted, I guess, from the age of like eight to like 16. And, you know, then you hit puberty or you're like finished with puberty and you look all different and you started doing different stuff. And the, um, you know, all I, all I wanted to do was be a comedic actor. It's all I wanted. It's all I cared about. I loved, you know, Little Rascals and, um, you know, Three Stooges and and Laurel and Hardy. I love all that black and white, really like out there comedy. You know what I mean? I really dug that, and that's what I wanted to emulate. So, you know, when it when it kind of came to an end for me, I was just totally broken up. I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Like this is all I want to do. And you know, and show business was something I just really loved. You know what I mean? It's like it's like viral. It's like once it's inside you, it's too late. You know? Um, so for me, actually, I just needed something to excel at outside of that so it's silly but I started playing football um, for my you know I went to kind of a rough and tumble public school uh, in the San Fernando Valley uh, and you know and I was I was a good I was little but I was really mean <laughs> and I was a, and I was a pretty good football player and I wanted to be captain of the team and and this and that and then um, I started working for Dick Donner every summer I'd work for Dick Donner in high school I guess my my end of my sophomore year I did a TV movie for Disney end of my junior year I was a production assistant you know cleaning up Dick Donner's uh, you know uh, a Chinese food that he just had with Mel Gibson so it was a real juxtaposition you know what I mean um, but it was great Dick was really cool kind of took me under his wing he used to like make fun of me He'd be like hey kids what do you want to do I'm like hey Dick I want to be an actor he's like god damn it kid don't be a freaking actor because I got to learn about movies behind the scenes man what are you doing actor so, I mean, I really respected Dick, and even though it was a joke, every joke's a confession, and Dick got me into different aspects of Warner Brothers, and he let me work for different people at Warner Brothers, different uh, departments. And kind of through that experience, um, I learned, you know, kind of, uh, I, I kind of learned about a whole new tranche, a whole new, um, you know, labyrinth of issues related to movies. and. Where when I was a kid, like my heroes were like you know Little Rascals and Three Stooges and Charlie Chaplin. It's like as I got older, I it was like it was different. It was like you know Louis B. Mayer, and it was David Geffen, it was Katzenberg, and it was Ovitz. And I was like, hey, what are these guys doing? You know, and and uh, Dick was really great in allowing me to kind of stay in that. I eventually wound up going to Berkeley, uh, UC Berkeley, for undergraduate. I studied business, president of the student body. Thank you very much, Chunk, for president. Coming for the governorship when the uh, when the governor is gone, it's a chunkster, dude. Next, um, and uh, you know, and, and uh, then I went to uh, you know I talked to Dick. I I, I remember t when I was my senior, when I was senior at Berkeley. I was like, Dick, it's like what, what do I do, man? I'm like I'm graduating, you know, I don't know what to do. And, and, and we talked about different stuff, and then we kind of talked about the idea of me going to law school. I didn't necessarily want to be a lawyer. But a lot of people I respected in the entertainment industry, you know, whether they were lawyers or managers or producers or agents or studio people had a law degree because there's something about the way it teaches you how to think and the negotiation of it and kind of all the intellectual property rights um, and, you know, and transactional issues that come up in this business that are kind of the, you know, the, you know, kind of bind this business together. And, uh, you know, and then I eventually went to UCLA Law School. And again, same thing. Uh, Dick got me a great job at Universal Studios, and then I met my law partner and started a law firm in uh, Beverly Hills. Well, a lot of it was improv. I mean, they really, they really kind of let us go with it. You know what I mean? And it was very like, I don't know. It was just a really open environment because Dick is such a great director that you can be like, and and he's, he's so secure with himself as a director that he can take even if it's a kid, still an actor, still you know, the the kid still has knowledge of the character. And like, and Dick was very much in soliciting. Okay, you know, you know, what do you guys think would be a good idea? Or if you had an idea, you would just uh, volunteer it to Dick and say, "Hey, Dick, wouldn't it be funny if I did this?" And there was no two ways about it. He'd either say, "Cool, let's give it a try," or it sucks. He'd go, "Eh, mm, nah, forget that." You know what I mean? So he was great, and it was really like he could do it in a way where you didn't feel bad because you're just kind of trying. You know what I mean? So it was amazing. I mean, again, we're talking like pre CGI. I think the only effects that they really had were. Or very primitive. It was like I remember, like when their 
I guess like when the ship breaks through, they had like, I think they like drew in the rocks when they were falling down or something like that. And we do actually, actually Goonies is, I'm sure you guys know this because you're doing this, we have the distinction of being, of actually using the worst blue screen in the history of all cinema. I mean, going back to the 30s version of King Kong, um, some really bad old MGM pictures, uh, the one with Fred Astaire and the Dobermans that could rob banks or something like that. I mean, it's like the worst. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like when they hold up oh, yeah. the thing, cut to that. Because that is the worst. What are they doing? It's like, it's like you guys haven't these guys made movies before? Didn't like Dick Donner do Superman? Where they had a dude flying all around the world and like flying so much to turn the earth backwards? You know what I mean? Like they could do that. They could make E.T. go home. But they couldn't make Mikey hold the damn doubloon in front of three kids and make it look like he's holding a doubloon in front of three kids? That's absurd, man. It's weird. I don't know. A lot of drugs in the 80s or something. 